Now, um, let me skip the PhD for a minute and let me, let me um, ask you, when you went back to Brazil after your PhD, um, what exactly were you expected to do? I was expecting to live in Brazil. I was not expecting to come back to the United States. So today I'm here working for Colorado School of Mines. I'm working in the United States. But my first plan when I moved to Brazil in 1995, December 1995, was to develop my career there, was to stay there. So that was my expectation. And when I moved back to Brazil, I worked really hard for that. I did several things. I had several students. I worked in several proposals, several projects. I had an, uh, an extra degree of my PhD in that university called Doctor. We would say that's similar to the Doctor of Science degree, but it has a different name. It's called Livre Docência in Portuguese. But similar to this Doctor of Science degree, kind of similar. So I worked really hard from 1995 to 2000 as a professor. I was an assistant professor initially, and then I was promoted to associate professor in 1998. So I worked there until the year 2000 as an associate professor at the University of Sao Paulo. So my plan was to stay there. Then I moved, but that was maybe discussed later. But in, in any specific... Um area of technology um, that you worked? Was there um, a, a project waiting for you or a position in the foundation waiting for you? Or you had, or you went back to Brazil and you pretty much had to carve your own resources and, your, and create your own project or, or what? Well, when I moved back to Brazil after my PhD, I, I had my position there as an assistant professor. I was a lecturer. But because I just had my PhD, I was immediately promoted to assistant professor. I was in a leave of absence. So for four years that I stayed in the United States, I had a leave of absence. So I had my employment guaranteed when I came back. So that was really fortunate you know, for me. And, and what year was that again that you came back? I came back to Brazil in December of 1995. And so as soon as I came back, I started teaching, I started writing proposal, I started developing graduate courses, I started developing new undergraduate classes for, for that particular department, the mechatronics department. And I did several things. I organized two conferences in Brazil, one in 1998, another in 1999. I was really involved in my... In my academic career there and I would say that I was successful uh, it was it was doing all right I, I could not complain you know. what what kind of conferences do you organize yeah I didn't talk about my research my uh, what's really my research but I would say that my research is really uh, interdisciplinary connection of two areas, of two different areas. One is called intelligent systems, where we apply uh, neural networks, fuzzy logic, artificial intelligence to controls. And another is uh, the conversion of energy. So energy conversion and power electronics, when they are interconnected to intelligent systems, is really my my research area, even today. So, in 1999, I organized an industrial conference, which is in the energy conversion area. It was an IEEE conference. In 1998, I organized uh, this uh, industrial conference. In 1999, I organized uh, a symposium called uh, Brazilian Symposium of Artificial Intelligence. So I was involved a little bit in the artificial intelligence development and a little bit in the energy conversion development. So that was my research and also what I did uh, in my uh, scientific societies. Now, I, I imagine that these conferences were international conferences. The first one was, both were Latin American conference. Okay. Uh, they were Brazilian, but we also had some people coming from Latin American countries because we are accepting papers in Portuguese, 
Spanish and English. So it was a mix. Of course, in the conference we are talking English, but we had we had people from Latin America as well. So, but I imagine with a heavy presence from Brazilian engineers. Yeah, there is still very good conference even today. They, they, we have this conference every two years. One conference in 1998 was Induscon, basically it's an industrial conference, Induscon. So I had Induscon in 1998, organized that, I organized that. We had 2000, 2002, 2004. In 1999, we had this ISBI, Brazilian Symposium of Automation and Artificial Intelligence. So it's every two years, we had 1999, 2001, 2003, last year, and I have another one in 2005. So they're pretty much a well established conference today. They were already, but they are. So that, that leads me to believe that these two areas of energy conversion and artificial intelligence were significantly developed in Brazil in order to, to draw uh, a critical mass of the energy conversion was more established, to be frank. Uh, the Brazilian power electronics community of... Uh, the power electronics community, I just said that. The people involved in power electronics, energy conversion, <coughs> power systems is really established in Brazil. We have a very good critical mass in Brazil. The artificial intelligence and controls is well established in Brazil. I would say that it's not the same level as the power electronics community, but it's, it's very well established in Brazil for research and for uh, uh, the industry support. This is a fact that today, for example, it's hard to have the same scholarship that I had for my PhD to go abroad. Today, it's very hard that the Brazilian government is going to give a scholarship for a student to go outside Brazil to have a PhD in those areas, because those areas are well established in Brazil. So most of the PhD program are now actually in Brazil, not outside. Not PhD program, PhD students. PhD students. Yeah. Okay. Um, 